Aserah Shimei Tshuva. We're in the 10 days of Tshuva now. And we've been talking about the whole of Elul doing Tshuva, coming close to Hashem. And the 10 days of Tshuva and Rosh Hashanah is always, we're still coming close to Hashem. And Yom Kippur is coming close to Hashem. And then Sukkot, we're coming close to Hashem. And then after Sukkot, we're coming close to Hashem. And then into Chanukah, Chanukah, we're coming close to Hashem. And then you keep coming close to Hashem until you get to Tu Bishva. And from Tu Bishva and onwards, you should come closer to Hashem until you get to Purim. And on Purim, you come closer to Hashem. And then from Purim, you come closer to Hashem until we get to Pesach. Pesach, you get closer to Hashem. Pesach, then we have, we have the Omer. We're counting the Omer 49 days. And at that point, you're coming closer to Hashem. And then you reach the Sukkot Shavuot, receiving the Torah. At that point, you're coming closer to Hashem. And from there on, you move into, you get up to Tisha B'Av, at which point you come close to Hashem, until you get to Elul. And Elul is when you do Tshuva, and you're coming close to Hashem. Until it gets to Rosh Hashanah, you're coming close to Hashem. <laughs> do we ever reach Hashem? Yes. Oh. Yes. On Yom Kippur. You reach Hashem on Yom Kippur. But what is the specific of these, t- these days in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? There are a few, but the one I want to speak about today is you wouldn't really think it, but it's amazing and, and fantastic and good and powerful. And that's the avoda of eating. Eating. Everything in life is an avoda. So not just prayer and meditation and doing mitzvahs and learning Torah, that's, and working on your character traits. But if God made you need to sleep, that means there's an avoda of sleeping. There's a way you're meant to sleep, why we sleep, how much you sleep, when you sleep. And one of the major things you do in your life is you eat. You eat a lot. You actually, you eat too much. And you eat too quickly. I could basically say that categorically, without any doubt. That you eat too much and you eat too quickly. And your eating is very much, well, it's the first sin of mankind. The first sin in the Garden of Eden was the sin of eating eating something they weren't allowed to eat, and also eating in a way they weren't meant to eat. They ate in a selfish, pleasure-seeking way. And it's really the foundation of all consumerism. To eat, we say you consume something, you eat it. But you consume social media, and you consume politics, and you consume things you shouldn't be looking at. And you consume, you're basically a consumer. That's what you're doing most of your life. Now, hopefully, you're going to be consuming Torah. You're going to consume. That's okay. That consuming is not a bad thing. If God made you need to eat, there has to be an avoda of eating. But specifically in this time, the main avoda of eating is to eat slower. And it's incredibly difficult. It's ama- you're going to try at lunch today to eat more slowly. And you'll see it's very hard because you're just compulsively consuming. And this is really teaching you that you have to overcome this compulsive consumerist nature of yours, which actually led to all of your sins in the first place. Everything that's taking you away from God consciousness is found, founded on that, that primal, primordial sin in the Garden of Eden, which is you're, you're taking something that you're not meant to take or in a way you're not meant to take it. Even when you're putting other people down, you're speaking Lashon Hara. You're taking power, in a way, because I'm better than them, I'm putting them down. I know something that you don't know. That's taking from someone. Every time you want to be right and make someone else wrong, you're taking from them. In fact, taking, according to Rav Desla, is the foundation of all evil in the world. All man-made evil in the world, all abuse, all environmental problems that we're doing, all come from this innate drive to, I need more. That's why we fasted the other day, and we're going to fast on Yom Kippur, because we're saying, you don't need to always feed your hunger. You feel hungry, so you find something to fill that. You feel bored, so you do something to not be bored. You feel lonely, so you call someone. You, you always feel some lack or some need, and then you run to satisfy it. So that's not healthy. It's, it's animalistic, actually. A human has something called self, self-control. I don't have to eat because I'm hungry. I don't have to shout because I'm angry. 
You don't have to do something because I'm bored. And we said in the last class that if you just sit with your boredom for a while and say, and become very present with it, then you actually stop being bored. The boredom and the fear and the need and all of that, that's just your Yetzirah throwing things into you to ruin your peace of mind. But when you can just be present with it, it's like, okay, I see you. And then you can go below it, it goes away. You never ever get rid of a craving by feeding it. Feeding it isn't going to make it weaker, it's going to make it stronger. It's going to take away the craving. You're craving a cigarette, having a cigarette will take away the craving, but it will then actually build the craving. So if you want to stop smoking, you have to actually stop smoking. It's <laughs> a crazy idea. It's brilliant, though. That's how you do it. So there's, it goes, it's very deep, because I'll just read from here. You have to understand that these ten days of tshuva, and we're already in, what day of tshuva are we in now? We're in the sixth day of the ten days. Did you realize that? Oh, it's just gone past. So we'll have it. Where have we been? The sixth day. We're in the sixth day of tshuva. But there's a special avoda in these ten days of tshuva about holy eating. Now, some people fast on these days. Some people fast every day. If you're on that level, you can do that. But there's actually a holier avoda than fasting, which is eating consciously. And it's much harder. Fasting is actually quite easy. You just don't eat. Eating consciously and mindfully and slowly, that's actually very hard to do. Even though the fasting people, they eat at night, by the way. So they, have to, they still get to do that avoda. So you can still fast if you want to. The Arizal, the holy Kabbalist from Sfat, he taught us this. That... During each of these days, have you heard of the ten Sfirot, the ten divine emanations, the ten powers with which Hashem created the universe? So you'll notice in Judaism, it's really there's a lot about ten, seven, and three. The universe was created in seven days. There are three Avot, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But it all is based on these ten powers that Hashem used to create the world. And we have ten commandments, we have ten utterances which the universe was created with, we have ten plagues. Ten is this very like round number. We, and we have ten people in a minion. Because what is ten? Ten is the plural version of one. Ten is the plural version of one. Hashem is a Hashem Echad. But we're in the universe, which is an emanation of Hashem, so we're already in the dualistic universe. But ten is, in binary, ten is one. So when ten comes together and it works together, it's like the prism through which the one, the one light of Hashem is then diffracted through this prism of ten, split into three and seven, really. And we can... Bring it all back to Hashem. So each day is a different sphere. This powerful light of these divine emanations is split up into two. Pnimi vechitsani. Inner, spiritual, and external, more physical. Because, do you know what? You're split into two. You have a spiritual soul and a physical body. So too, these powers are split into two, so to speak, more spiritual, more physical. When we are davening, that power is brought into us. We pull down that power. We are saying by the, the 13 midot rachamim, when we call out Hashem, Hashem, Kar Racham V'chanon, we're actually pulling down those powers. We're giving Hashem the, the power to be mashpia, to, to influence the world. When we're praying, we're bringing down the Sfirot. But when you are eating and drinking, when you're eating, you can bring down the more 
physical, external power of that particular sphere. Kachu b'chol yom v'yom, maser shimet That's how it goes every day. It's okay. מכיוון שההשפעה נכנס בעת האכילה, צריך שישתדל שהאכילה תהיה קטושה קרוי. So it means that if this holy light is being brought down in these wells you are eating, you have to eat in a way to become a vessel to receive that light. So obviously if you're eating forbidden food, not coming down. If you are eating without saying a bracha, not coming down. If you're just stuffing your face with no consciousness, not coming If you're eating like an animal, not coming down. You want to be eating in a holy way. Holy eating. Ki ha'echila hi akli shi'chaniz et shefa Because the eating is the vessel which we can use to bring down the abundance. Kama shi yaiteh moremimet ha'shefa yechnes yaiteh ufa'al yateh And according to the, the consciousness and mindfulness and holiness of your eating so too are you bringing down the holy energy of eating. Eating is a very major avoda, because we do it a lot. And it's a very, very, very wonderful opportunity to bring in God consciousness to our eating. I ran a, yeah? What does conscious eating look like? Number one, conscious eating looks like eating slower. So, um, to, if you could take a bite of a something or a fork of a something, you put it in your mouth and then you put it down. Your hands should be empty whilst you're chewing. Not, I've got my fork loaded up already. I'm like chewing, fork loaded, hum. No. Put the fork down, chew. I would say there needs to be some breathing through your nose whilst you're chewing. By the way, you'll taste the food better and you'll eat less. You overeat. One of the reasons you overeat is because you're not eating, eating consciously. You're just shoveling food in your mouth. And when I say your hands should be empty whilst you're chewing, that means you shouldn't have a phone in there. You shouldn't be looking at a phone and eating. When you eat, just eat. I'd say even maybe just try it once today, or at least for your first three bites, don't talk to people. Don't be distracted. Just sit there and eat. Ch chew. Breathe. Slowly, that's, and you'll realize, I ran a Shabbatam once, and we had a silent lunch. 60 people, lunch in complete silence. Very awkward, by the way. I don't know if you've ever done it. Very awkward at first. But then everyone shared after, and this one guy said, well, I poured myself some Coke. If I was running the Shabbatam, they wouldn't have had Coke available. But, and I took a sip, and I realized I actually don't really like Coke that much. It's too sweet. But I drink it all the time. So I... I took water instead, and I drank the water, the water was amazing. And then because I was drinking water instead of Coke, I took a, a piece of lettuce, and I could actually taste the lettuce. And I realized when I drink Coke, I can't taste the other food, because of it is, is. So he basically said he had this most unbelievable spiritual experience with a piece of lettuce, just because he was being <coughs> conscious. And everyone shared this. Many people said I ate a lot less, I just felt I didn't need to eat so much. And so people were having, this girl was like, that sweet potato was the best thing I've ever eaten. And I said, it actually wasn't the best thing you've ever eaten. It's the only thing you've ever eaten consciously. <laughs> That's why it tasted the best thing. It says here, You have to understand, in all of your avoda, any day that is specially for a specific thing, your Yetzirah knows that, and it's going to fight you. For example, we're coming up to Sukkot. Sukkot is about Simcha. So it's going to, it's going to be hard to be with Simcha on Sukkot. Things are going to go wrong. It's going to be a bit cold. The meal won't work out. So you've got to be aware of that. Rosh Hashanah, you're not allowed to get angry at all. So there's going to be someone annoying you. Just before your wedding, you have seven days. You're not going to see your color. Big Yetzirah time. Doubt. Is this the right person? What am I doing? So the Yetzirah knows. Because Hashem made both these powers. Hashem says, this is your avoda, And then the Yetzirah says, if that's your avoda, I'm going to push you in the opposite direction. I'm going to block you big time. Now, why is it doing that? 
is doing that really because it's working for Hashem to make your avoda even greater. Because if you just do your avoda with no challenge and no pushback, then it's okay. But once you have pushback, but you overcome the Yetzara as well as doing your avoda, there's a much greater avoda, you come much closer. So you're going to see, I just want you to watch yourself eating lunch today. See how fast you eat and how you eat. It's amazing. And I, I did this specifically for breakfast this morning as well. It's very difficult. And I generally eat quite mindfully, but it's very difficult, not just to like... So give, you've got to give yourself time to eat. For Ika and the main path of success, Be'ezrat Hashem, with Hashem's, B'milchamazo, in this war, the word for bread is lechem, by the way. And lechem is in the word milchama. Milchama. Lechem represents food in Judaism. And food is a war. The war every day. Is ha'ichila karuyaze in order to. So milchemet ha'ichila is lechale at. Eat very slowly. It's going to give you presence and mindfulness. And to understand what it's really doing, what it's fixing, is all the Lashon Hara you spoke, it's just because it came out. And all the bad things you did, you just did it. All the, all the things that took you away from spirituality was just some kind of reactive, just splurge. So if you take a moment and become conscious, then it actually counteracts that and hopefully builds you for the rest of your year. That, this is part of your cleansing process, bringing you back close to, to Hashem. Even in modern psychology, they say, take a deep breath and count to ten if you get angry. Don't lash out, take a deep breath. Count to ten. What's that doing? It's giving you that space, that distance from the reaction, that animalistic reactive drive. So how you eat during these ten days is going to fix your eating and actually just hopefully shift your consciousness. I wish we had more time, but I had a meeting this morning.